Today I've got three corn husk crafts. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a corn husk wreath. All right, so we're gonna start with these corn husk, and I got these in the, what they call the ethnic food section of Walmart. 70 to 80 leaves in a bag is gonna get you a lot of projects done. This is a thrifted wreath that I have. I did see some at Dollar Tree, but I think they're the $3 um, wreaths. You could also use probably a, you know, foam if you wanted to here. But you gotta be careful. Stuff likes to melt, and this hay that's in here will give you a nice firm base. All right, so we're gonna look at the corn husk. They're in a variety of colors. I don't want to bleach mine because I like, again, the rustic look and I love the variation of color. So now I'm just going to tear them down to the right size. This particular brand I was very, very happy with because I thought they would be more fragile, but they are actually quite flexible. And you'll see that in this project. So I can't guarantee what the fresh ones would be, like if you took them out of a, a field or somebody's garden because they might would be more brittle and dried out and I know that there are um, wreaths that you can make by soaking these first but you know how I like to do I want to make this something that most people can do with as little difficulty as possible so I'm going to show you how to do it without all the bleaching and soaking and stuff but you do what you like so I'm going to overlap them on the back y'all 15,000 we made the goal thank you so so much and you can see here how that will look. We're just gonna continue around like this, overlapping about halfway. And I kind of got, I'm kind of giving it like a, an eyeball from the corner. I don't want, or the side, you know, that where the curve ends as you're going over the side of the wreath. So pretty much I'm gluing it down toward the center here, if you're looking at this flat like a circle. You know, in my head, that made a lot more sense than when it came out of my mouth. But do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see the space that is left after I glue it down between my fingers and the edge of the wreath? That's kind of what you want. If you're using this type of wreath because you want to be sure that you have enough of this husk to go all the way around the front of your wreath and to overhang it, right? Because we want this to be sort of like a little starburst pattern. So continuing around, I'm gluing them down. They're just overlapping in the middle. Instead of doing these one at a time, I'm gonna do the entire back first. And you can do this too. I thought this was probably the easiest way to do it. By the way, you're gonna wanna put that glue gun temperature on low because you're gonna be touching this a lot. Get your finger protectors, whichever way you wanna do this, just be safe. I don't want any of my crafty friends having any injuries when watching my videos and trying to recreate anything. Especially if you have neuropathy, you don't have good feeling in your hands, be really careful. Okay, so this is how to look in the back, and then when you flip it over, you can see which one needs to come down first. And we're gonna follow that circle all the way around. A Little bit of glue right on the top. I don't wanna glue this down on the tip because it will curl completely under, and I want that part to be free. So we fold it and glue it like toward the center where my finger is, and we let the rest of the little tip there just overhang just like this. Now I'm going to continue to do this. I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, I had requests that people like to see it a little bit slower so they get a better idea of what I'm doing. So this is why I'm doing this here. Um, if y'all make these projects, which I really hope you do, I want you to hang on to the wreath. Now I'm going to show you how to make two. So if you make your two wreaths, I want you to hang on to them because later in another video, we're gonna decorate them. Yep, what I'm gonna show you today is gonna be the simple little rustic farmhouse, whatever you wanna call it, technique for these wreaths. And then later, we're going to embellish them. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. But I wanna give you some time to get your materials together and to make your wreath bases. And then maybe next week, we'll work on these together and make them really special. So continue around just like this. They're gonna overlap a little. And you see, if you had a, a set of these corn husks that were rough and really dry, you wouldn't be able to fold them and bend them like that. They wouldn't be as pliable and they would be cracking. So just be cautious of that and just try to, you know, watch out for that sort of thing. 
Now you can see where I have glued down this first layer all the way around that you can still see the wreath underneath. See how it looks on the back? And this is how it's going to look on the front to begin with. We're going to go down about an inch and then begin to overlap and make another row here. This is going to be where we're going to curve over and fill in our little blank spaces. So you can continue around just like this. You can go side to side. You can overlap just a little bit. You can make this wreath as thick and fluffy as you would like. Continue around. You can see how they overlap on the bottom, how they kind of just lay on top, one on top of the other. And you want to keep going in a circular pattern all the way around. So if you don't have this type of a wreath form, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you on the next wreath what you can do to make yourself a, a sufficient wreath base. Let's put it that way. And you can get the supplies from Dollar Tree, so that'll be good too. So just keep watching this so you get an idea of the pattern. I want you to know what is going on here. Again, we're not going all the way to the top. Now by doing this, by stepping down just a little bit and making these glue down further, when you fold them over on the front, you will have more uh, length so that they will be a little bit longer. You see this? So I don't know exactly what the pattern is for this, but I like to call this like a starburst because it looks sort of like the sun. So that's just what I'm going to call this wreath. This is going to be our starburst. How about that? This is our first one. Continue around. You want to fill in all of your holes, all of your little spots. You, like I said, make it as thick or thin as you want. And just press it down and protect your fingers. You can see how there are different levels there. And the benefit of having this type of a wreath is that if it's under there and you can see it, not a big deal, right? Because you usually have corn and hay bales and all that at a farm, right? So that would be perfectly fine. But if you want to cover it up, I'm showing you how you can do that too. So now you're going to get your wreath. You're going to look at it and say, where do I need extras? And I can clearly see where I need to add in a little bit more. I love how it, the, the edges just naturally kind of curl down, you know? Now it's going to depend too on which way you put these husks on here. They will curl outward too if you want to turn it the other way. You know, when it grows up around, it's like the leaves that grow up around the corn, the ear of corn, and they curve inward to wrap around it, right? So those, what you're seeing is me putting the curved side downward. But you could do them upward if you wanted to, and it'd be a little more fluffy. A little more floral-like, maybe. So now this is much better, right? And look at the variation in the color there. I love that. That grayish green is so pretty. So now as you add on your layers, getting closer and closer to the last row that you want to put on here. I've only got like three rows. You're going to use a thinner piece. So tear it smaller than the other pieces. Start with the widest, then the next one, and then the smallest toward the top. It layers nicely this way. Um, and I really like the look of it. Now I'm going back up to the top row. This is not difficult. You don't have to do it this way. You can go back down, but this is just going to give it the length of each little husk that sticks out. You can see here, some will be shorter and some will be longer. And I like that. And you can do it like this. This is what I did to make sure that that would fit right in the spot where I wanted it. I just kind of laid it out there, looked at it, flipped it over, and then glued it down. So please do not be intimidated by this. This is not hard. Maybe this is something that you could do while you're sitting and watching a good movie. You know, um, what about the Downton Abbey new movie? I have not seen that yet. If y'all have seen it, I would love to know what you think because I'm saving it for a rainy day so I can watch it because I loved watching the series. See here how they curve and how you can still see the wreath form underneath it? I really like that. Now we need something to hang it, so I'm going to give you this option to hang it because I'm going to show you a different one on the other wreath. But I'm just going to tie a really simple knot and a piece of leftover burlap that I had. Not burlap, jute. I do that all the time. And then I'm going to find a spot on the back where I want it to be my top. I'm going to add some hot glue and just take another piece of that corn husk, tear it, 
and use that as a little little backing there to cover that up and then all you have to do is just trim down that jute so it doesn't show on the other side let it dry for a minute and then once you flip it over this is how it will look and you can use it just like this with nothing else as you would like but like I said we're gonna do a little something extra probably next week so hang on to it you can follow me on my social media I'd love to see you there the next project is going to be our wreath number two. Okay, so this is where we're going to make our own base. You're going to take two bamboo wreaths from Dollar Tree. You can see they're shaped funny. They're not completely round. One is smaller than the other. That is not going to be a big deal. We're going to take our tags, of course, off of there and lay them on top of one another. Y'all, this is how I store my jute. Isn't that cute? I did a video on this uh, probably two years ago where I made this. I love it. My jute never gets tangled up, and it looks nice sitting right there. I don't lose my jute, and it doesn't roll off the table. I love it. It's a little thrifted piece that I got. Okay, so I'm just going to go in four sections here and just tie these two together. Y'all know how to tie a knot. That's all I'm doing. I'm just tying a double knot. I'm just kind of pushing that wreath around where I want it. Get it real nice and tight. So it won't slip on us when we start wrapping it because we will be wrapping this up. So we're going to do top and bottom, or north and south, and then east and west, or west and east, or side to side, whichever way you want to call it. And then it will be in one piece. We're going to call this one wreath at this point. And you can use wire if you would rather use like some floral wire or something like that. But it doesn't take a lot to get these to stay together and they don't weigh very much. So I'm going to take some of this cheapy decorative mesh from Dollar Tree. And I am going to wrap it around. And I chose this color because I had it in my stash already. And because it looks very close to, you know, like a cream color. And it's going to look nice behind my, my pieces of corn husk right it's gonna kind of blend in and I like to get it all wrapped up I didn't want to use the bear you could though you could actually use the bear but I wanted a little more surface area to put the glue on to put my pieces down so I'm gonna use this entire roll and go all the way around here and I believe I got around it twice so then when I get back to the end I'm just gonna gather it up flip it over tuck it into that last section that I rolled up easy enough and then I'm just gonna grab my glue gun and I'm just gonna poke it down in there and put a lots of little dots of glue in there to hold it in once it's dry this is how it's gonna look and you can use either side of it you can turn it whichever direction you like now I'm gonna start with these these are about one to one and a half inches wide um, where the ends of it where we're gluing it down so they're gonna be a lot smaller on this one okay you can easily tear them into pieces and then you're going to start stacking them now we're going to be going you can either go in clockwise or counterclockwise position whichever you would like to do and we're going to start stacking and overlapping going around this wreath all in one direction all the tips one way all the glue one way I want part of this to be overhanging the outside and then we're going to have some that goes slightly toward the inner circle of this wreath. You can see what I'm doing and you can see that there's definitely a curve when I put the glue on there so that's I'm putting the uh, the curve downward but you could flick yours out if you would like and they would just stand out from the wreath a little bit more so it depends on the look really that you're going for. Pressing down to make sure that it goes through and hangs on to the surface really nicely. It doesn't take a ton of glue, like you don't have to like glue the whole thing down. I want to have a little bit of movement in the pieces of corn husk on the top. Like you know when the wind blows or the breeze or whatever, I want to see that. So I don't want to like glue the entire length down, just the bottom. And we're going to continue along like that, overlapping a little toward the inside, a little in the center, and then a little toward the outside. You can see what we're doing here. 
So for all of the, those of you who participated in the giveaway from our video last week, your names will be put in a hat and I should have that information to you sometime today. If you don't see it already, then sometime this afternoon, I will have the winner announced in underneath the comment that you make and also in my community tab. So be sure that you have hit the, um, the bell to get all notifications. All right, when you come back around to the beginning, I want to slow it down so you can see what we're doing here. I'm just going to lift up a little bit and continue around. I'm not going to glue the tips where I'd already gone down. I'm not going to glue those down. I'm just going to kind of move them out of the way. And again, they're kind of pliable, so they'll move a little bit, you know. You can get a little lift out of them. I'm just looking to see what looks good. Kind of lay it down. And again, you know, try to look at your... When you're tearing those and you're pulling those apart and getting your stack ready to put them down, choose some ones with some variation in color. They look really pretty and so natural and earthy to me. I just love it. You know me and my rustic stuff. You know how I do. All right, so we are back around and almost done filling in our last little swing of it here. You keep going because you don't, you don't want any gaps or holes. You want this to look like one continuous swoop all the way around and don't worry if it starts looking kind of weird it's not a problem just keep going push through and keep looking at it look at it from all angles all sides see where you might want more you can see here I'm kind of looking and pointing to areas where I want to add a little more just add a little hot glue and go ahead and add those in I'm gonna look here and I know that this piece needs some so I'm gonna add it right here toward my outside just to fill out that just a little bit more this is easy to do again these corn husk projects they're not hard to do don't be confused with the length of time it takes to do it because it'll be very rewarding i am so surprised this is the first time i've ever worked with corn husk and i am absolutely in love with the way these projects turned out and we're not done we have something else after this one so stay tuned Okay, so I'm just now going back in and filling in the little gaps that we had here. And when I'm happy with it, we'll go ahead and make a hanger. I'm going to use this ribbon from Dollar Tree. This is a beautiful, it almost looks like a linen. And um, it's got a gold trim. thought it was really pretty for this project. I'm going to take about 18 inches of this. I'm going to go under my wreath and up through some of the corn husk. So it almost disappears in there gotta be careful I don't want to break anything don't want to tear up any of those beautiful pieces that we worked so hard to lay down I'm gonna pull my ends together and then double it over and make one little knot you can leave the knot on the top if you'd like if not thread it through so that the knot is underneath and then you can trim it off if there's any that is underneath that you need to remove and this is how it is going to look beautiful beautiful the last project is our corn husk pumpkin. This little thing is so cute. Dollar Tree pumpkin. You're going to take some spray paint similar to the color of your corn husk, or you can use chalk paint, whichever one. Throw that daggum top away. That's so, uh, that's very low end. Let's throw those away, right? All right, so you're going to get your bucket of rocks and your pole. Take this outside and spray paint it while it's drying. Work on those corn husk. Now, I just decided to use, these are like an inch and a half. I went ahead and tore these into inch and a half pieces and then I tore some, tore off the little crazy edges so we'd have nice flat pieces to work with and then I tore some off a little smaller and this is where I'm checking to make sure that these are pliable because we're going to be folding these. I don't want anything splitting and messing up. So I decided to take my oatmeal chalk paint and just paint this whole pumpkin with it. Because the spray paint didn't have the coverage I wanted and I was afraid I would melt that foam on that pumpkin if I kept putting layers on. So the chalk paint worked in a pinch. But you want to be sure that it's completely dry and do not use your heat gun on it. Okay, so the color's good, right? It's close enough. And here's our pumpkin when it's nice and dry. Now we're going to start covering it. So I'm going to take some of the 
corn husks that are a little bit bigger and these are going to be the first four that we put down they're going to be a little bit bigger so you're going to put some hot glue on it on the cool temp of course and then on the bottom we're going to make like a block or a square or a rectangle um, with these we're going to make a pattern of four so the same thing as we did before you know you're going to make a square here so you're going to go left and right top and bottom or whatever is going to be your pattern and it's important to know this for me mainly i mean you could just go down here if you wanted to and just put them all over the place willy-nilly however you like but that's not how my brain works and if i'm going to do a project i need to have it in a way that i can explain it to you so i'm hoping that some of you learn like me and that you don't get frustrated by the way i do my tutorials but here we have it so now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the other side we're mirroring what is going on in the other side right it's going to overlap the foam and it's going to stick onto the ones beside it when you flip it over this is how it looks north south east west we're going to start by folding upward now the bag of leaves that i got work perfectly i had exactly the length that i needed to go from the bottom square up to the circle because we're that little hole in the top is where the stem came from and where i held it to paint it and put the pole in it this is going to be covered up you won't even be able to see this these will overlap onto that hole and you won't see it at all so i'm adding a little bit of glue and then pushing upward toward that hole to make sure that our leaves stay down have you ever tried working with corn husk before these are really cute i would love to do like a corn husk doll at some point so if y'all are interested in that let me know down in the comments and um i'll try to do something like that for you and we'll do it together okay so now we have our first four down and this is how it looks when you first do it got it so if you've got this you've got it right now we're going to overlap on the corners of each of those you see here and those corn husks near the bottom where you see me pushing outward they are almost like uh, i don't know how to explain it almost like gathered or like puckered or something on the ends so you can actually carefully lay those down a little bit flatter you can kind of stretch stretch them out a little bit now if they were really dry you couldn't do that they would definitely split but these are nice and, and soft nice and pliable okay so you see the same process as we did before and we're going to go right over with those bigger pieces over this section so with all eight of these on here this starts our base that's going to be the base of it and you can see how painting it really benefits it i mean you would maybe could even see if you left it orange you could probably see it through these corn husks and we don't want that do we okay so now we got our first section done and if you can do that then you can do all the rest of it you're going to grab out your next size so we're going to go down just a little bit in our size and then you're going to overlap in all those areas that are left blank you can work in the same format of four back and forth back and forth all the way around until you get the entire thing covered see i put that one down so i put one straight across from it it helps me keep in my mind what i've done and what i still need to do crafting this way helps me also when i have a lot of interruptions like when my kids are home because i can tell where i left off and that's important that's really important okay so here we go i'm gonna lay that one down you see that hole is completely covered now keep working around your pumpkin here keep going around until you get all of the pieces as many layers as you need to do till you get the look that you like and again if any of y'all are bored i do apologize but i'm doing this for my ladies who need a little more time so it looks good right but the fact that it has those little areas in there where they're not laying completely flat it kind of needs a little something extra so this is where I've taken the smaller ones, the skinniest ones, and I'm going to use those to go over all those cracks. Y'all be sure, if you have a product that you want to send me, if you have a card that you want to send, if you have anything that you want me to know and you need to send me a letter in the actual mail, my post office box is below. If you want to send me an email, you can find my email address also. 
and you can send me an email. All right, once the pumpkin is done, you're gonna take another one of those and you're gonna make your own leaf. You can make a simple leaf like this if you want because I'm thinking, you know, what if you don't have a leaf? You can keep using these, right? This one's a bit too long, so I'm gonna trim it down a little bit more. And you can just use this on the top of your pumpkin if you wanted to. Or you could use one of these beautiful burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. Or you can use a leather leaf from Dollar Tree. I just picked these up, y'all, and I thought, oh, that's gonna look so good on this project. So I'm just gonna take one of the little oak leaves or maple leaf, trim it down, and I know I want it to go right here. I don't want it to lay flat like that, so I'm going to layer it with my little leaf that I just made just like so and I like the look of that yeah that's better right so I'm gonna add some hot glue here and press it down close to the center I'm gonna leave a little space because I want to put this little branch it came out of a bag from Dollar Tree I'm gonna glue it down right in the center of my pumpkin they have thicker ones bigger ones you can grab a limb out of the yard you know whatever you have that you want to use would be really cute whatever you like and so far this is how she looks let's give it a bottom this is going to give it a little more security so it will actually stay down because it's really lightweight and I don't want it to flip over so I'm going to use this little piece of wood this little wood slice here it's got a crack in it so I can't use it for Christmas ornaments but I can use it for a base if I put that split toward the back you'll never see it it'll give it a little more weight and I can sit it down just like that now let's make a little, one of those little twisty vines. I'm just using a piece of a floral, floral wire that I pulled a flower off of. Twist it around my little tool here. But you can use pit berry, whatever, you know, you want to use. You could use wire, jute, whatever you like. But it was laying there, so why not, right? That plastic gives it kind of a leathery look anyway, so I think it looks good with that. I'm going to take a little bit of that glue, lay it here beside here so it can dry i love it isn't it cute what a cute little pumpkin nice you can make sets of these you can make them with little pumpkins whatever you want so here are our projects now here is that beautiful pumpkin with the leather leaf And remember, you can dye these and you can also color them, but we're gonna leave them plain. I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. Without a doubt, I know that you can do this. Don't underestimate yourself. Take your time, take a deep breath, and just start doing it. You gotta start somewhere, right? So I made two beautiful wreaths here for you. Remember what I said, hang on to your wreaths. Now we're gonna embellish them together. And then we have our little pumpkin over there. So the set of these look really great together. And with two wreaths, she got a lot of options here. I wanna say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and to all of my viewers. I appreciate you so much. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye.